Hey everyone, my name is Chris, and today we're going to be discussing how to create a basic web page that will display up to date cryptocurrency prices of your choosing, too. Um, so, we got some fun stuff coming up, but if you want to, uh, you know, skip around this video, go to portions of this video that you'd like to see more than others, I'm going to be including a timeline in the description as well as a timeline that's appearing right there. Um, so I'm assuming if you wanted to skip, you already have. Otherwise, we're just going to be diving into the application and how I made it. So a demonstration. It's very simple. It's very simple. Um, is it? It's not running. So we'll do a Flask run. Flask is the Python library in which we create our web pages. And then it gets routed to our local host forward slash price. Now what this web page does, it displays a crypto, sorry, a Binance cryptocurrency pairing. So Ethereum gets paired to Bitcoin and then its corresponding price, as well as the time of that price right here. And every time you refresh, the price also, sorry, the time also gets refreshed as well as the various prices. So once again, boom. Very easy, very simple. Um, and this, again, this isn't supposed to be an elaborate, you know, application. It's more so a just teach the bare bones so that you have a starting point for if you want to build something more complex yourself. Um, so that's that's the goal here. Now let's uh, let's let's dive into the things. Let's talk about how I made this. Um, and I, I don't exactly know, I'm sure you guys are coming from different starting points. So I will try and be very gentle in my explanations. Not that I'm the expert or anything on, on this, but I do know obviously enough to you know make something basic like this. So that's, that's something, right? Uh, so let's, uh, let, let's talk. So we have this setup.py module right here. Um, and also, I don't know if you guys use Visual Studio Code or have knowledge about um, virtual environments or configuring, you know, Visual Studio Code, you know, things like making sure you have your Python interpreter um, linked to your specific project. Um, virtual environments are big. Like I said, if any of that configuration stuff with uh, VS Code you're unfamiliar with, leave a comment. I'll, I'll try and, you know, resolve some of those issues in the comments. As well, I might leave some um, links in the description for uh, VS Code important documentations. Um, besides, besides that, we have the setup.py, which essentially the reason I have my app.py, which is my actual Flask uh, page, and setup.py in a different Python uh, file is simply just to sort things and keep things uh, sort of on different uh, files in the same, you know, bigger project file. Um, so simply just organization, peace of mind. Uh, I, I don't want, I, I easily could do this, you know, and it would all work, but, uh, you know, I just don't like that organization. So anyways, we have this setup.py, which, uh, we have a Binance client, right? we're importing the Binance client right there. We then log into our client by opening up our key, reading it in, then our secret key, reading it in, making sure to close, um, making an instance of the client, just printing to the screen, logged in, just so we know, and then we return our client. Now, the importance of this function is that, of login client, is that it gets called in get prices. So right here, we have a portfolio dictionary with every pairing uh, that we want or that's in our portfolio linked to just a default zero price. Um, we create an instance of the client using the function that we just made. Then we uh, use a command from the client, which is uh, tickers equals client dot get, uh, get tickers. And if you're unfamiliar with, um, that is not spelled, if you're unfamiliar with um, 
some of the commands you can do with Binance's API. Um, just take a look here, and it's uh, it's pretty comprehensive. You can do a lot of things. So uh, let's see. I am getting ticker right here. So it is simply just this command that I'm running, which is tickers equals client dot get ticker. Um, and when I do that, we get a list of all of the cryptocurrency tickers. Um, and then for the remainder of this this uh, function, we're looping through this tickers. Essentially, what we're saying is for every cryptocurrency in tickers and then for every asset in portfolio, if the crypto symbol is equal to the assets key, then we're going to update that portfolio's um, value with the ask price of the ticker. Um, so yeah, that, and then we return it, and then we have a uh, a last function right here, which is get time. I created a date time uh, object, and then uh, we we just look at the current time, we format it, and then we return it. Um, pretty simple, um, but again, if you have questions, feel free to ask. Um, but the, the the purpose of setup.py is essentially to set up our app and help serve it. So we import our setup, which we created right here. We import it. We uh, also import Flask and render template. We, uh, we create an instance of Flask right here called app. And then we say we route, uh, we create a routing right here. So app.route price. So essentially every time I go on the local host 5000 and I, I go local host colon 5,000 um, and then forward slash price. Every single time I do that, this function index is going to get ran. So that means that I get updated prices and I get the time. Now recognize these functions, get prices and get time from setup.py, get prices, get time. And that's because I imported it. So now I can render this template. So I render a template, essentially, what, what Flask does is it uses a, um, I guess you'd call it a library called Jinja, which essentially allows you to write Python in what would be uh, HTML script. So honestly, it, it's kind of the intersection of HTML and Python. <clears throat> and again, <clears throat> I could, instead of rendering a template, just render the actual HTML instead of storing it in an index.html. But for simply organization purposes, I recommend creating a template folder like this and then rendering the actual HTML there. Like I could copy paste this and put it in app.py uh, and then return render uh, all my HTML that I, get, I wanna get rendered, but I just like this method a lot uh, better. So what I'm doing right here is I'm saying I render this template index.html. Now here is index.html. Um, we're gonna ignore the CSS for now, but we, we start out with a uh, with a title, and this is what Jinja does. If you want to pass in a variable into a uh, a Jinja HTML document. What you're going to be doing is using these curly braces. Uh, you want to use two of the curly braces for simple um, variable declarations like that, like title. Um, you want to use one curly brace for you know flow and control statements such as for loops. So right here, we're, we're saying we want our title variable to go in the title HTML um, spot. Now, how does it know what the title is? Well, index.html gets rendered, right? And we pass in a variable title. Uh, right here, we're just saying the title is going to be my portfolio. And uh, right here, it shows up right here as my portfolio. That is the title. Um, so there's that. We also pass in these variables, which are our uh, dictionary of prices, which is updated prices. We define updated prices right there. We say time equals time. Um, time is right there. Uh, and then title. So we can see how we use the rest of the variables right here.
So we have an H1, just a header, um, time of refresh, and then we have another double curly braces where the time variable gets used, which is passed right there. Um, then we have our body, and here's where we use a for loop. And also something that's specific to Jinja is a lot of the statements, you want to uh, begin and end with these um, percentage, I couldn't remember the name of that symbol, the percentage symbol, and that's just Jinja syntax. Now, not everything needs the, the percentages. For example, just a simple like title, you don't need uh, the percentage um, symbols there. But for control statements, you do. So right here, I'm essentially just looking at the dictionary that I passed in. I'm saying for now. Notice again, this looks very like very much like Python, and that's because it is Python. That's what Jinja allows you to do, which is really cool. I like the intersection. What I'm saying here is for every key, comma value in dictionary underscore prices dot items, I want this key to go right here. And I want the value to go right here, and then I end the for loop right there. So I'm able to iterate over a dictionary and basically render um, these little HTML pieces. So I eventually create the, the other option for this would just to, I create a for loop so I don't have to do that because um, obviously this just saves me time. So that's, that's why uh, Jinja is very useful. It, creates reusable pieces of code. Um, and that's essentially what a template is in Flask. It's just a reusable piece of you know HTML code. Um, so that is that. We also have some styling here. And what I, what I do right here is uh, I indicate the style sheet, and then I include a link to that style sheet. Um, again, more Jinja. And then we use, now I'm not exactly sure about this URL floor. To be honest, I don't know if this is a Jinja specific thing or is this a, an HTML thing. But what I do know is that it's saying um, you want the URL for the style sheet is going to be in the folder um, parent folder static, and then we want to follow this this routing CSS slash styles that's slash CSS. Um, in which case we do that, we follow, we go in the folder static, and then we say CSS styles.css and here's where we are so we're saying dot ref uh, text align center where is dot ref e ref yep refresh so we want to refresh the this little um, text right there um, time again text align center and obviously this isn't the most complex uh, CSS but this isn't the most complex app so it doesn't really need it so we center this time, um, and then the price, we just add a little bit of padding in between uh, each price, just so they're not clumped. And um, yeah, it, it's, it's pretty simple, like I said. So if we wanted to change this, it's also very easy. So for example, uh, let's see, so let's do uh, price. If we wanted to do, instead of, We'll do zero, zero pixels. For some reason, we decided to specify zero pixels of padding. And just like that, it, every time you refresh, the, the page itself um, refreshes uh, in terms of the code that you added. So it's you know pretty simple for that. Uh, is there anything else that I believe is important to explain? So I explained the CSS, I explained the HTML, um, also this, this might be important. If you cannot get your, sometimes when you're running flask and you run the command flask run, sometimes it will say that it cannot locate the flask app. In which case you need to create a dot env or a flat or a dot flask env file just in your, your, um, your project's root folder. And you wanna include this flask underscore app, all caps, uh, static variable which just locates a path or list a path for the specific application that's going to be rendered for Flask. And then this is also useful just to let the program know that this is for development and not production. Um, and yeah, that's, that's about it. Now there are a lot of paths that you can uh, take 
to expand upon this. You know, if you wanted to create visualizations and put them on this web page using, you know, something like matplot, or uh, sorry, matplotlib, um, you could do that. Uh, you could perform some sort of data analysis. You could use some sort of learning to, you know, predict. There's a lot of things that you can do right here. But additionally, what you could also do is you could pair this Flask backend with a React front end. And what that would mean is essentially passing this data as a uh, your own REST API. And what your React front end would do is read that REST API and create some JavaScript with it and whatever you wanted to do. And the reason I mention that is just because there is a lot of user interaction capabilities that JavaScript has that Python also has, but JavaScript, I, I would say, um, makes it a little bit easier. But this definitely serves as a nice foundation for what is to come. And if you guys would like to see a React plus Flask, you know, some sort of web application uh, using that stack of things, let me know and I, I might be able to, to do something. Um, but hopefully I didn't under explain but also didn't over explain things. Uh, yeah, uh, but if I did or did not, let me know. Uh, otherwise, you know, thank you guys for watching. I personally think this is, you know, really cool stuff. I myself am actually, I'm uh, creating a Flask React app as we speak. Um, so maybe I'll make a video about that in, sometime in the near future, but it's, uh, it's definitely taking some time. Um, but yeah, uh, let me know what you think about the video. Otherwise, have a great day.